Deep learning and neural networks are by far the most important machine learning algorithms in today's world. They power everything from environment perception for self-driving cars to voice assistance and speech translation. In this video, we're going to learn how these models work. The problem of supervised learning can also be expressed as the problem of function approximation, or curve fitting. Many times, the functions that interest us are way more complicated. For example, yeah. a function that takes in Ver. English sentences and Ver. outputs French translations. Ver. Green glass towards worm verse. Ver, 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 ver. We need to use a model that has a lot of expressiveness, or the ability to express a wide range of functions, especially complex ones. An increasingly popular set of models that can fit complex functions are neural networks. Neural networks are composed of individual neurons inspired by biological neurons. A neuron receives multiple inputs, which are combined as a weighted average. This weighted average is then fed into an activation function. This function outputs a single value, which is zero for low inputs and one for high inputs. It can be approximated by the S-shaped logistic function. So essentially, a neural network is a sequential arrangement of logistic regression functions, or neurons, whose outputs are then fed as inputs to other neurons. We'll see how this arrangement of simple functions is capable of representing complex functions. If you haven't already watched our 5-minute video on logistic regression, please do so now. Back to neural networks, let's take the simple example of modeling logic gates. Logic gates are defined by these tables, called truth tables. AND checks whether both inputs are 1. OR checks if at least one input is 1. And XOR checks if exactly one input is 1. Let's try to represent these functions using a linear boundary that separates the zeros and the ones. It's quite easy to do this for AND and OR, as you can see here. However, things get complicated when trying to model XOR with a linear or logistic function, which cannot fit this nonlinear boundary. However, we can represent XOR as a composite function, or one which takes the outputs of other functions as its inputs. One way to do this is to define a function H1, which is the OR function, and H2, which is not AND. Remember, the XOR operation requires that only one input be one, but not both. So let's bring back the OR function that we saw before, and now call it H1. For H2, let's bring back the AND function, but this time we'll flip the ones and the zeros to create the NOT AND function. Finally, we can combine the outputs from H1 and H2 using the AND function. The points 1, 1 and 0, 0 from the raw feature space are now mapped to the transform feature space here. XOR for these points evaluates to 0, since either both points are 1 or neither is 1. Similarly, the points 1, 0 and 0, 1 from the raw feature space are mapped to the transform feature space here, overlapping each other. XOR for these points evaluates to 1, because here only one value is equal to 1. As we can see, the XOR operator is perfectly modeled by the combined output of H1 and H2, which can now be fit easily by a linear boundary in the transformed feature space. In this neural network, H1 and H2 are the neurons in the hidden layer, which lies between the input and output layers. We've successfully solved the problem by stacking two layers of neurons. It turns out that by stacking more and more layers of neurons, that is, by creating deep neural networks, we are able to model very complex functions. That's why it's called deep learning. In our case, the logistic regression units use sigmoid activation functions. However, there are many other options. Right now, variants of ReLU are in fashion. That's it, folks. You just learned how deep learning works. Stay tuned for an upcoming video on how to interpret and understand decisions made by complex models like neural networks. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and make sure to subscribe to Econocent for more.